Okay. Hi, my name is Kim Gaynor. I teach English at Radford University. And I'm here today to talk about my word, my phrase, orphan works. Let me spin a scenario for you. Imagine a situation where copyright is very carefully tracked, copyright is renewed uh, every few years, and a written record is made of who holds the copyright. That's the way it used to be. Over the years, though, it's, it, things have changed, and basically people have had copyright presumptively. Without taking any action, they create something, they've got copyright. Well, that's very convenient, but the problem with that is there isn't necessarily a registration, there isn't necessarily one place where you can go to determine who holds the copyright. And as the years pass, uh, the, the knowledge of who originally owned the copyright, uh, well, it gets lost. So you end up with a situation where you have indeed these orphan works. That is, there's something that probably is should be copyrighted, but you don't have any way of tracking who that person is. So that if you want to use this copyrighted material, well, who do you go to to get that permission? All right, let me illustrate this. And first of all, oops. First of all, let me mess up my. See, I'm doing it there. Okay. First of all, let me stress. I'm about to use a few, a couple of images. One of which is probably out of copyright, so it's in the public domain and I'm safe. The other one probably is copyrighted. It's an orphan. However, because I'm using it to illustrate the concept of orphan works, I'm going to claim fair use. That's the only thing that's going to save me. But, unfortunately, that's not enough very often. If you want to make very extensive use of something that's copyrighted but orphan, you're just simply out of luck. I'm going to start with something that was created in 1895. It is a photo. And here I'm trying to be very, very clever. I decided to pick a photo of youngsters, most of whom are orphans. Now, since this photograph was taken in 1895, the fact that we don't know who the author is is not a problem. It's definitely in the public domain. But I want to contrast that with something, a photo that was taken in 1938. That's trouble. 1938, and it's definitely going to be copyrighted, assuming we know who created the photo. Now, this is another picture of orphans. And again, just like the earlier one, the author is unknown. At some point, maybe the name was attached to the picture, but it's, it's, it's lost now. So, let's say that you would like to um, republish this photograph. Let's say that you would like to uh, bring it out in a book. Uh, yeah, pro publishers probably going to get very, very nervous. And in cases like this, in the end, fearful publishers very often will simply say, well, no, the provenance of that photo is unclear. We do know the date. Uh, and so it, it gets lost to scholarship. It gets lost to the public. Sometimes these things are very, very uh, right, sad in a way. You get a situation, for example, if you have a family photo taken by a photographer in a studio that's gone out of business and you can't trace the, you can't trace the photographer. You will take it to your, you know, your local drugstore. You want to make a copy of it. Well, pharmacist at the local drugstore is going to say no dice. Uh, yeah, I'm going to be violating copy work, or I don't want to get involved in that, go away, and it, you know, it languishes uncopied. Now that may sound kind of trivial, but in fact, uh, studies of archives uh, in, in both Europe and the United States have come up with estimates of orphan works in the tens of, the thou tens of thousands. In some cases, some estimates go into the hundreds of thousands. So you might think, oh, too bad, you can't make a copy. Uh, at your local pharmacist. But in, in fact, what is happening is that significant portions of our culture are simply placed off limits because of this issue. Uh, of the books that have been published uh, over the years, again, we're, we're talking in the hundreds of thousands, only a few are currently in print and the others are simply lost to us. So this is why I picked this term, Orphan Works, because it really refers to an enormous body of work 
uh, music, films, photographs, um, traditional printed books, but an enormous body of work that's languishing, it's locked up, it's in the archives, it's in the libraries, but in terms of being uh, able to widely distribute it, to be able to build on it, to be able to republish it, we simply can't. They are orphans.